There are many important visible and palpable features of the head which we have to have in mind when we do um, a routine clinical examination. So to start with, we're going to name the different regions of the head. So the first region is the frontal region, which is just here. Then we have the nasal region, the maxillary region, just laterally. Eventually we're gonna have the mandibular region and the masseteric region on this side. Just ventral to the ear, we're gonna have the parotid salivary gland, which is just there. And ventral to the parotid salivary gland, we will also have the mandibular salivary gland, which we can feel very well. The mandibular salivary gland is going to be in between the linguofacial and maxillary vein, okay, which are branches of the jugular vein. It is important to have in mind that there are superficial structures on the masseteric region. So this is going to be the masseter muscle. And superficially to the masseter muscle, we are going to have the dorsal and ventral branches of the facial nerve. And in between the dorsal and ventral branches of the facial nerve, we are going to have the parotid duct that runs across the masseter. Ventral to the eye on the maxillary region, we are going to have the infraorbital foramen, which is very easy to palpate. The infraorbital nerve exits through this foramen, and it's something to have in mind clinically as it's going to innervate the upper teeth and um, lips of the dog. So if we want to um, use local anesthetic we can desensitize this zone. Okay. Eventually, on the mandibular region, just there, we are going to have the mental foramen through which the mental nerve exits. So, in the neck and dorsal regions, there are several bony landmarks that we should have in mind. There are seven cer cervical vertebrae. 13 thoracic vertebrae, 7 lumbar vertebrae, 3 sacral, and depending on the breed of dog, we're going to have in between 20 or 25 caudal vertebrae. Starting cranially and moving caudally, we can feel the wings of the atlas, which is the first cervical vertebrae, we can also feel the spinous process of the axis, which is the second vertebrae. And we can more or less feel the transverse processes of the rest of the cervical vertebrae, especially numbers three to five. We can feel the spinous processes of the thoracic vertebrae and the lumbar vertebrae. We can also feel the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae that are orientated cranially, just there. The spinous processes of the sacral vertebrae. And we will be able to feel practically the whole vertebrae, the caudal vertebrae. Okay. <laughs> In the neck region, there are several structures that we should be able to palpate. One of them is the larynx. One of them is the larynx, which is just here. Moving caudally, we can palpate the trachea, just there. There is an important structure um, sitting right next to the trachea, which is the thyroid gland, which we can normally palpate, especially if it's enlarged, onto the left and caudally of the trachea, we are going to have the esophagus, which is difficult to palpate, but it's important to know exactly where it, where it is. Okay. And in this region, we should also mention the jugular vein.
which is a common site for blood sampling and intravenous injections as well. It's there. There are two lymph nodes that we should also have in mind, which are the erythropharyngeal region, which is there. Okay. And we are also going to have the prescapular lymph node, just cranial to the scapula, as its name says. <coughs> 